Thank you, Christy. That was wonderful testimony and uh, perfectly spoken. And thank you for the scriptures you shared. Um, very encouraging. Just in a few minutes that we have today, and I'm abbreviated because we got a lot going on today, is I uh, want to talk just a little bit about the sin of pride. And right off the bat, um, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, is pride really a sin? I mean, after all, do we not uh, try to instill in our children a sense of pride, a sense of excellence, to strive for excellence, and a, and a sense of accomplishment, achievement. Um, in fact, many of the uh, therapies that we go to and talk to when we, when we feel like we need therapy, part of that therapy has to do with trying to instill in us a sense of self-esteem. A management guru said once that one of the best things that you can do for your company is for your people to have pride in their products. And so low self-esteem, some would be, some would say the problem with our people is not uh, pride, but low self-esteem. So why are we talking about pride? I've had people say, well, if you have pride, you'll have less conflict. Sometimes we know that pride will lead to a sense of error in judgment. And, you know, if you think you're a warrior uh, and you're invincible, you'll find out real soon you're not. And, and just so many things that, that we can find that will, uh, will affect us in different ways uh, that we know that uh, the Bible says that pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. But at the same time, uh, I, I, I think to myself, what is, it, uh, what is wrong with a little bit of pride? Uh, what is wrong with a healthy sense of pride? Is, is there anything wrong with that? And, and I think, you know, you know there's, there's nothing wrong with that except Jesus was against it. <laughs> so trying to figure out what it is and, and why it is that Jesus would tell us about this and, and, and to warn us against this. In his baptism, Jesus was standing there and the voice from heaven came forward and said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And later on, as Jesus was being tempted by the devil in the wilderness, Satan said to him, if you are who you say you are, command that these stones be made into bread. And if you do, everyone will begin to worship you. And I guess he was right. But Jesus said no. Jesus refused to allow pride to get in the way of what God had called him to do. Jesus refused to, refused to allow pride to stop him from being what God had called him to be. And so Jesus becomes the example for you and for me to be a servant leader. And Jesus was the one who went all the way to the cross. And so the Bible says in Philippians, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. That being equal with God, he thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but he took upon himself flesh and was made in the likeness of human beings, in the likeness of a man. And he humbled himself even to the point of going to the cross. Jesus was our example of what it means to have humility and to be what we need to be. And so the story today, Jesus tells a parable of two men to go up to a temple and to pray. And one of them is a no good, dirty, rotten scoundrel. He isn't worth a hill of beans and basically he is uh, someone who swindled his way through life. He's taken advantage of people and nobody likes him. And he doesn't pretend to be somebody that he's not. He knows he's a sinner 
And he comes to him prayer and he says, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. He's not putting himself down in a sense. He's telling exactly what he is. And he's admitting what he is. But the other man was different. He was a Pharisee. Everybody liked him. He was a guy who walked around with a step that was, just seemed like to have a, a, a smile on his face all the time. And he was King James only. I mean, he had his hair cut just right. And he was just exactly what you would think a Christian ought to be. When you wanted to think about a Christian, you would point to this person. That's what I want to be like because he's got all his uh, ducks in a row and he's got it all worked out. And he, he seems to have it all together. And so he prays and he says, Lord, I want to thank you that I'm not like this other men are and I'm not like this guy right here, this no good, dirty, rotten scoundrel. I do all these wonderful things. I fast, I tithe, and I do all the right things. And indeed he did. But then Jesus surprises everyone when he says, I tell you, that the publican, the sinner, went home justified, but not the other guy. He doesn't say he was more justified. He says he was justified, and the other one was not. Recently, a, a lady came to our house who uh, I had ministered to, and she had been on drugs and uh, to the point where she had taken way too many in an attempt probably to take her own life, is what she says. And I asked her while I was ministering to, to her and praying with her uh, if, she had, uh, if she had gone on the street and, and sought drugs. And she said, no. I didn't believe her, but that's what she said. But we ministered to her from where she was and she prayed and accepted Christ and uh, I saw her a few days later, and she called and said she wanted to come by the house, and Sandy was there first, and I, I came later. And she said, I want you, when I saw her, it was like a new person. There was a glow about her. There was something completely different had changed in her. And she said, I want you to know my life has changed. But I want to first of all confess something to you. I told you that I had not sold, uh, sought after drugs on the street. And that was a lie. I actually did. And I want to confess that to you, and I'm, I'm just sharing my story with everybody. In fact, I'm going to go to, today to this big church where I used to go, and I'm going to tell them all what God has done for me. And you know, that's what God can do in our lives if we let Him. God can strip away the pride from all around us and all in us to where we begin to be honest about ourselves and honest about our struggles and we don't pretend to be somebody that we're not and to the point that we don't care who knows that we stand up in front of the biggest church in town and tell them this is what I used to be but this is what God has brought me to God be the glory See, I think that's probably where we mess up sometimes. We get to thinking that our talents and our skills and our abilities and our knowledge and our degrees and all things are our own selves, that we did it all. And we forget to realize that we would not be able to do any of those things if God had not given us the ability, the skills, and, all the, and move mountains for that to happen. And sometimes we forget that. And sometimes God has to remind us Oh, yeah, I know those degrees on the wall, but guess what? I gave you the opportunity to have those degrees on the wall. Several years ago, I went through a, my own time of trials like Christy was talking about, my dark night of the soul, and I, I came, I left ministry. Never thought I'd ever go back into ministry. And I took a job working with Mountain Comp. Uh, at the time, uh, was an instructor in a greenhouse program and then later on became a supervisor. But at the time, I started out there. I just took it, be honest, it was a job. I needed a job. I had no idea what I was getting into, and I had no idea how it would change my life. 
And I started working with people who were mentally and, and physically challenged. And I remember those early days of remember it, thinking about, I'm just, I'm just here till I get some, something better comes along. <laughs> I, this is not for me. I, I, you know, I'm just here till something else comes up. And, and, and you know what? Seven years later, I'm still working there. But the interesting thing is, they taught me so much about life and about love and about pride and all those things. Because none of the people that I was working with in those days cared about the mistakes I'd made, but they also didn't care about the degrees on my wall. None of that meant anything to them. They just wanted to know me as a person, and they wanted to know that I was going to love them, protect them, and be there for them. And they taught me so much about life, and I understand that when it comes down to it, when it's all said and done, None of those things really matter. When we are laying on our deathbed, we're not going to worry about the degrees on our wall or the money in the bank. The main thing we're going to be worried about is, did I live my life for Christ and have I made a difference in somebody else's life? And that's where it really all comes down to today. Where you make a difference in somebody else is going to make a difference in somebody else and in somebody else. You see, it gets, it gets passed down from people to people. And I think that's so much a part of what we're doing today. So the parable today, the story of the two men is really about worship. It's really about worship. Because when it comes down to it, what it, what it really is, is about worshiping a God that we realize who's bigger than us, who's greater than us, and we are not God. And we come to this realization of thinking about a great and a wonderful God. If you can look at the stars at night, if you can look at the heavens and you can look at the mountains, you can see there is a wonderful universe, but there is a God who created that universe and how small we are in comparison to a God that created all things. Then sings my soul, my God, how great thou art. That's where we want to get to. That's the place we want to get to. And we get a vision of a God who's greater than ourselves, and yet He comes very close to us. And so in our worship today, anytime we're praying, anytime we're worshiping, we're reminded of our smallness. Every, time, every once in a while, God, God has to show us, doesn't He? Who we really are and who He really is. I'm going to ask the musicians to come as we pray. Father, today we ask you to help us today in our struggle to find who we are. And God, we know that sometimes we, we need to not think less of ourselves than we should, but also not more highly than we should either. Because God, today that you could take every bit of this away, and we could be like Job, God, just down in the pits of life. But God, when we realize who you are and we think about the fact that you are God, the God of the universe, and that we have a relationship with you, we are humbled in that reality. And we come to worship you in that knowledge. In Jesus' name, amen.